In this video, we're going to make a launcher with Unity. This is very easy to do, and it's exactly what I did to make the CodeMonkey Steam app. It's a great project to build, for example, to organize all of your prototypes and minigames into one nice complete package. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is going to be a very simple video since this is quite easy to do. The goal is to make a launcher very much like I did for the free Code Monkey Steam app. There's a link in the description in case you want to try it out. Now over here I have my three other mini games that we're going to launch. So there's the top-down shooter. There's Minesweeper and the Wash Your Hands video game. These are all standard Windows builds. And they were all made or showcased in previous videos, so check those out linked below. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So okay, here I am in my basic empty scene. Let's begin by making a basic UI for our launcher. So first, just go into the canvas. And first, let's make a container for all of our buttons. So let's call this the Launcher UI. Let's extend to occupy the whole thing. All right, that's the container. Now inside, let's make a container for a button. So for example, let's call this the Top Down Shooter button. And then inside, let's make a nice image so we can click on it. All right, so there it is. Now let's make this a simple button. Now, if you want, you can use the standard Unity button. Here I'm going to use the button UI from the utilities, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And with this button class, I can easily add some mouse over behavior just to make it look just a little bit better. So let's just make a nice image that's going to be enabled when we mouse over. All right, let's see this basic button in action. So here it is, and as I mouse over, yep, there you go, there's the nice image. All right, so far so good. Now let's make our script to handle our actual launcher. So a new c -sharp script, call this the launcher UI. Let's drag it onto the launcher. Now in here, we're going to launch our apps. So let's first add the code to our mouse click. So we make a private void awake. And awake, let's find our button. We get the button component. And we modify the click function. So this is the action that will be triggered when we click on the button. So it's in here that we want to launch the game. Now the way we're going to launch an external executable is with the process class. And that class is inside using system.diagnostics. Now we can access the process class. And inside we've got a very nice function called start. And here you see that we have a string for the file name. So that means that we're going to need the path to the actual executable. And now in order to find the string for the path, we're going to first start off by accessing application in order to get the data path. So this will be the path to the assets folder. Okay, so here I am in the Explorer and this is our project. Now the builds for our games are inside this folder and in here we have the builds and the various builds. So it's in here that we're going to construct a build for the actual launcher. So let's first see that to see where the application.datapath will go to. So here, let's just quickly make a build, go into build settings, and we're going to make a build, and choose the build folder and build. Okay, so here we have our build created. And now here, the application.datapath will go towards the path inside this data folder. So it will give us this path up here. And now our builds are on the folder above it and inside the folder builds. So taking our current path, we go into the folder above it with dot dot. All right, so now we're on this folder. Now we go inside builds. And then inside builds, in this case, we want to launch the top-down shooter. And then inside the actual executable is, yep, like this one. All right, so that's our complete path. And that's all we need to send to our process. Okay, so just like this, our top-down shooter should be able to be played when we click on the button. Let's try. So here we make the build again, place it in the same place, and let it run. All right, here's our build. Let's run. 
Okay, here it is. There's the button and click on it. And yep, the top-down shooter starts playing, so hit play. And there you go. Now I'm playing the really nice top-down shooter. So everything works. It's the exact same executable. All right, awesome. And as soon as I quit from the actual game, now I go back into our launcher. All right, so we've got the basics pretty much down. Now we can easily apply this to the other games and then expand upon it. All right, so I've added two more buttons for the two other games. And just for fun, I've gone ahead and swapped the images for some simple videos. So it just looks really nice. Okay, now let's check out the code. Now here we just have to do the exact same thing for the other buttons. So one of them is gonna be the Minesweeper button and the Wash Your Hands button. Now once again, we need to modify the path. All right, so just like that, it should be working. So once again, let's test. So that means we need to make our build. And now uh, one thing here, which is previously you saw that launcher was launching on full screen. Now, maybe that's what you want to happen. However, in this case, I think for a launcher, it makes more sense to be in an actual window. So over here, you can click on player settings, which opens up this nice window. And then in here, you can change from full screen mode and set it to windowed and just set a default screen width and height. So in this case, let's go with 1280 by 720. So just basic 720p. So again, this is not necessary, just I find it better to have the launcher on an actual window rather than on full screen. So that's why it's nicely separated between what is the launcher and what are the games, right? So just like this, let's launch it. Okay, here we are, let's open up the launcher. And yep, we have our very nice launcher window. And now click on this one. And there you go, we are now inside the fully playable top-down shooter. So just click, roll around, and yep, everything works. All right, let's quit. Next week, we've got the Minesweeper, so let's try. And yep, here we are now playing some Minesweeper. So there you go, and yep. And yep, there you go, it does work. And lastly, the Wash Your Hands video game. And yep, here we are inside our build, so let's spray everything around, tell this one to wash his hands, and yep, there you go, this is a really nice game. Alright, so everything is working, we can launch any of our games from our separate launcher app. Awesome! Okay, so with all of the basics of the launcher fully working, now let's expand upon it and play around with some things. Now over here, when we call process.start, we can actually grab the active process reference. So let's store that in a field, so a private process for our process. And when we start, let's set it. And then we can also make a private void update. And one of the things that we can ask on the process is going to process and ask has exited. So this one will be true if the process has exited. Okay, so with this, we know when it has exited and after it has, let's set it to null. So this one only triggers once. And now in here, let's show a really nice message. Here in our canvas, let's add something on top. Okay, so we have a nice little message window. So we want to show this whilst the games are active and then hide it when no game is active. So for that, let's grab our message. And by default, let's hide it. So set active to false. Then when a process is launched, then we set it to true. And afterwards, when it exits, then we set it back to false. All right, so very basic, very simple. Let's see if it's working. Okay, here we are, and now let's click, let's launch Minesweeper. And yep, there you go, as soon as it starts, we can see the message. And if I quit right away in here, yep, there you go, the message is gone. So we are correctly identifying when the process is launched and when the process exits. Okay, now let's customize the message. Okay, we have a reference to our text. Now let's clean up our code a bit and make a proper function. All right, we have two separate functions. So in here we hide it and on awake we also hide it. 
and then on show we're going to call this function. Okay, the message should be working. Let's test. Okay, so here we are, and let's try launching the wash your hands. And yep, we saw the message just briefly. So the wash your hands game is now running. Now we can alt tab. And yep, there you go, we can see the message. So now I'll go back into the game. And now let's quit. And yep, there you go, the message is gone. And now if we open up a different one, yep, there you go, we see a different message. And yep, there you go, it's gone. All right, so here we have our launcher fully working. Now, as I was making the CodeMonkey Steam app, I actually found an issue with this system. The launcher for the CodeMonkey Steam app is actually pretty complex. It has tons of videos playing, so it was actually using up quite a bit of CPU and GPU. So with that being used, it was actually causing the underlying games to play much slower since the launcher was taking resources in the background. Now we can easily solve that by making sure that the launcher does not run whilst it's in the background. So to do that, it's extremely simple. Over here on the launcher, we can do it through code. So we just access application and go into run in background and set this to false. So it will make sure that the application does not run in the background. Another thing you can also do related to performance is access application, the target frame rate, just in case your launcher is running way too fast. So you can limit it to let's say just hundred frames per second. So just another option in case you have some performance issues. So with this, it should no longer go above hundred FPS and it should not be running on the background. Another place where you can change that setting is going here onto build settings, player settings. And yep, down here you have one for run in background, so you can just untick it in here or do it through code, whatever you prefer. So let's test. Okay, here we are and the launcher is running, so we can see all of the videos currently active. Now let's launch a game. And there you go, right away, as soon as this window goes into the foreground, that one now stops. So the launcher is no longer taking up any resources. And as soon as you quit and goes back to the foreground, if there you go, it goes back to being active. So doing it this way, you're not going to have any performance issues by using the launcher to launch your actual games. All right, so that's pretty much it. Here we have a real nice launcher that we can use with some custom buttons, all of them nicely polished with some nice videos. And we can click on it, and there you go, now we are launching one of the games. Then click on another one, and there you go, we're launching another one. And click on another one. And yep, here we are in full screen playing our full game. So as you can see, this is really simple and it's something you can easily build to organize all of your various prototypes or any games that you've made. So perhaps if you're looking for a job, you could make a launcher and attach it to your CV and that should help you really showcase your skills. Or you can also use it to launch anything you want from it. You can run any executable you want. So you could just make a really simple launcher with some nice visuals to have buttons to run all the programs that you normally use. All right, so if you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.